Untamed Isles, The Path Awakens, by Aaron Hodges. The ship rocked beneath Captain Gozzo Sigard's feet as it rose on the swell, then plunged down the other side. Water crashed over the stern and lightning flashed. Men screamed, helpless before the storm's wrath. Captain Gozzo clung to the tiller as darkness momentarily gave way to light. Sailors stumbled in its glow, grasping at ropes and loose cargo, anything that might save them from the icy plunge. Another wave swamped the hull and swept the deck, collecting broken rigging and men alike in its wake. The captain watched, helpless, as his people were dragged beneath the broken gun walls into the waters of the northern sea. The lightning faded, plunging them back into darkness, but the desperate faces of his crew remained stark on Gozzo's mind. The ocean roared and the thunder boomed. Men screamed. The ocean had come upon them suddenly, appearing on the distant horizon and racing across the northern sea, turning calm waters into white-capped waves before the crew of the Blackbird could flee. The rains had struck first, drenching every soul aboard their beleaguered ship. The winds had soon followed, tearing at the sails and slashing them to pieces. Last had come the waves, crashing upon the hull of the Blackbird, smashing oars from sailors' hands and hurling men from their feet. Now caught in the grips of the storm, there was nothing the crew could do but cling to their rope and pray to the Divine for salvation. The captain alone fought on, hands locked on the tiller, desperate to see his crew to safety. Remnants of the sail still flapped from the mast, gifting the Blackbird just enough momentum for him to steer. Miles from shore, there would be no escape into a shallow cove, nor a safe berth in which to shelter. And so Gozzo watched the darkness, seeking the next rolling behemoth. Again and again he directed their ship into the maw of those beasts, sending the blackbird to scale the great mountain of water. His arms ached and the icy air burned his lungs, but still he sought to save those he could, even as yet another loyal sailor was washed to his doom. He stumbled as the ship crashed down from the crest of the wave. Spray whipped across his face, stinging like a thousand tiny stones. Gozzo gritted his teeth against the pain. A flash of lightning revealed the next wave. It rolled towards them, white waters breaking at the peak, threatening to come crashing down upon the fragile vessel. The blackbird rocked as Gozzo threw himself against the tiller, and ponderously the ship adjusted course. Holding steady, Gozzo closed his eyes, sucking in fresh lungfuls of air. This was it, the end of his strength. The power of the storm had drained his energies, leaving him empty, listless, all but spent. How much longer must he hold on, pitting wit alone against the endless fury of the ocean? Another scream cut through the thunder. Water swirled, and another young sailor was gone, vanished into the icy depths. Desperately, Gozzo sought out survivors. There were startlingly few. Less than half of the fifty who had set out with him just a week before. Bastards! Enraged Gozzo hurled a curse at the capricious gods. In that moment he cared nothing for their wrath. What more could the fickle gods hurl at his tiny vessel, which had not already been unleashed? The world turned white as lightning struck the blackbird's bow. The crackling of flames followed. Smoke swept across the deck as the stench of burning wood and scorched iron filled the air, though the rain still poured down. Another crack followed. This time the lightning struck the ocean, sending a geyser of boiling water across the decks. The flames hissed as they were extinguished, even as another flash turned the world to white. Gozzo clenched his eyes closed, but still the light seared them. His ears rang and he slumped against the rudder, bowed beneath the wrath of the gods, his defiance seared away by the fury of salt and flame. The world rocked. Caught in the grips of nature's wrath, Gozzo squeezed his eyes closed and fell to his knees, no longer able to stand, to even think. The storm, the ship and the men, all were forgotten before the thundering until all that remained was the burning, the ringing of thunder, and the stars dancing before his closed eyes. Silence. The shift was so sudden, long seconds passed before the captain realised that the world had changed. Even as he blinked his blinded eyes, 
he was convinced the end had come, that he crouched in terror, the storm had taken him, and he had passed across the valley of death. Finally, though, his senses returned, and he tasted the ash upon the air, felt the feathered touch of a breeze against his skin, and he knew he'd survived. A chill filled his lungs as he drew breath, the last of the stars fading from his vision. The remnants of his crew stood amongst the ruins of the rigging, between the shattered foremast and scattered rope. Each of them stared out into the darkness at a world suddenly, impossibly becalmed. Gozzo's fear turned to confusion as he stepped away from the tiller, looking to the sky. The storm had vanished, as though it had never been, leaving the ship so still it might have been docked at port. Stars stretched across the sky, thousands upon thousands, the night clearer now than he had ever witnessed in all his sixty years. A half-moon had risen while the storm raged, now its light carved the darkness. Heart still racing, Gozzo took another step and stumbled as the ship seemed to shift unnaturally beneath his feet. He found himself disorientated, as though he'd just stepped foot on solid land after weeks at sea. Frowning, Gozzo lowered his eyes to the becalmed seas, seeking sign of survivors. Beyond the railings, he could see the brilliance of the moon and the stars reflected in the still waters. Except, those waters were too still, too quiet. A shiver passed through Gozzo. Something had banished the storm, some power beyond mortal understanding. A boon, but one that could not be trusted. They needed to hoist what remained of their sails and limp back to harbour, before the storm's wrath, or something worse, appeared. Leaving the tiller, he stumbled towards the nearest of his sailors. Blood ran from a gash across the man's forehead, and he stared blankly into the distance as Gozzo approached. Clasping the man by the shoulder, Gozzo gave him a gentle shake. Mike, you okay? He rasped, his voice rough from the salt spray. Blinking, Mike turned to look at his captain. What? His eyes remained unfocused, and Gozzo realised the stunned sailor would be of no use for the moment. He turned to the next. One of the youths had recently joined the crew, crouched against a fragment of the gun walls. The man rocked back and forth, muttering something beneath his breath. The captain caught only snippets, but he knew even before he reached the sailor that he would find no help there either. Gozzo's frustration began to build. He was about to attempt the rigging himself when he glimpsed again the reflection of the stars upon the waters. He paused, watching the way the light played across the ocean. So calm, he thought, even as he wondered. Turning from the railing, he cast his eyes around and searched for a lantern, but all he could see lay broken amidst the debris. There was one he kept back at the stern, inside his cabin. It might have survived. It he stumbled through the ruin of the blackbird, his heart beginning to race. Suddenly he feared they had not been saved at all, but rather plunged into one of the seven hells. Some of his men were finally beginning to rise, groaning as they tested injured limbs, but Gozzo ignored them now. He reached his cabin door and dragged it open, then fumbled blindly for an unlit lantern he kept alongside the door. When he found the handle, he lifted it from the ring, out into the night. The glass remained blessedly intact, the pilot light still burning cheerfully. He twisted the knob, feeding fresh oil to the flame, and light blossomed. Struggling to swallow a lump lodged in his throat, Gozzo stepped towards the gun walls. His eyes were wide, straining to pierce the murky darkness, to make sense of what lay below, but there was no sense to be found. The blackbird had not come to rest on becalmed waters. Beyond the railings of the ship, there was no water at all. The moonlight reflecting from all around came not from the sea, but land. A land of jagged, broken slopes of shining crystal stretched out in all directions. Where before had only been the raging northern sea, somehow they had become stranded on an island without a drop of water in sight. In Gozzo's hand, the lantern began to gutter as the last of the oil was consumed. He stared at the dark land in which they had been marooned waiting for the night to return to darkness. When it did, silence fell across the ship. And somewhere, out amidst the endless crystal, a beast howled. 